next 30 minutes, we go behind the scenes of five very special Raleigh area businesses. For the past few months, our success story staff and camera crew have been in search of companies here in the Raleigh area that have achieved that extra measure of success. These stories not only give these companies credit for their achievements, but in many ways educate us all a little more about business, its contribution to our American way of life, and about Raleigh area businesses in particular. We'll be taking a very interesting look at a company that uses advancing technologies for the diagnosis and treatment of disease. We'll then be moving camera and crew to Wake Forest for the story of a company whose president was named 1994's Turnaround Entrepreneur. And then a look at a company that started in 1965 and was known as the Migrant and Seasonal Farm Workers Association. A lot has happened since their beginning, including the change of their name. We think you'll be very interested in this story. And we'll be featuring a company that has taken computer skills to a new level in helping home builders. And we'll be bringing you a success story of an insurance company here in the Raleigh area that's been known for excellence for over 65 years. So stay with us for the next 30 minutes for our first edition of Success Stories for the Raleigh area. Our first story in 30 seconds. Success Stories, the television show for business, continues. Jess? Well, Dee, this time we return to Raleigh for a story on a very successful nonprofit organization. Originally known as the Migrant and Seasonal Farm Workers Association, they're now Telemon Corporation. You'll see now why we were drawn to the story of Telemon. A Telemon is an architectural supporting structure carved in the form of a human being, aptly symbolizing the mission of Telemon Corporation, a nonprofit organization through which people support and serve other people fulfilling basic needs and providing the building blocks to develop self-sufficiency. With roots that trace back to 1965, Telemon was previously known as the Migrant and Seasonal Farm Workers Association, historically serving migrant and seasonal farm workers. However, over the years, other disadvantaged populations have never been neglected. Grants are sought and needed services are performed for the homeless, unemployed, hungry, abused, and the handicapped. Today, Telemon Corporation has over a thousand paid staff and volunteers to lend a helping hand throughout nine states. Sixty-eight federal grants and contracts, as well as some state grants, provide the funding necessary to give the help where it is so desperately needed. Many local and statewide advisory groups actively participate in Telemon's 70 different programs, including Head Start, Employment and Training, Housing, Drug Abuse Prevention, and AIDS and Cancer Awareness Education, to name just a few. Success Stories recently had a chance to meet with Telemon's executive director, Dick Jonas, to learn more about the corporation and their rich tradition of human service. Dick, how exactly was Telemon Corporation formed? In the 1960s, the government declared what it called a war on poverty and launched a number of programs like the Head Start program and the Job Corps. And another one was funded to combat the conditions endured by migrant farm workers as publicized by Edward R. Murrow's documentary, The Harvest of Shame. The North Carolina Council of Churches launched a program, a health education project that sent outreach workers to migrant labor camps. And years later, it became a nonprofit corporation with the mission to serve farm workers and those in need. And today, as Telemon Corporation, we operate scores of programs in nine mid-Atlantic and Midwestern states. What has been the key to such long-term success? Our grants are awarded competitively based on service delivery and fiscal history. And so we know it's not enough to be committed social workers. We also have to be good stewards of the taxpayers' money. So we practice what we call the two R's. We want to be responsive to our clients' needs, providing them the services they deserve. And we want to be responsible in the way we manage the programs with sound decisions and good fiscal controls. And that translates into staff training that keeps them on the forefront of the human services industry, as well as technology-based programs for everything from client information intake to management flow. And that being on the cutting edge makes an impression on federal funding agencies. Tell us more about some of the services and programs that you provide. Our main three programs start with employment and training targeted to farm workers uh, for those who may need emergency assistance in lean times or those who decide to leave seasonal work for the stability of long-term employment. If they lack education or marketable job skills, we can provide remedial training ourselves through community colleges or technical schools, or by contracting with employers who can train and hire them. Our Head Start centers provide services to preschool children that are designed to stimulate their emotional, intellectual, and social growth in a positive learning environment. Parental involvement is a crucial element of Head Start 
And they participate by serving on the co center committees that do everything from budgeting and planning. And of course, they volunteer in where they're needed inside the centers. Our goal in Head Start is to provide both the child and the parent with a rich experience that can carry them through this critical period and beyond. Our housing programs give us results we can see right away. Primarily in rural areas, we work with elderly, disabled, and other low-income residents. And depending on their need or eligibility, we can provide up to 12 different services, including the installation of weatherization materials or entire heating systems. But we can also rehabilitate their homes from replacing everything from the floor to the roof and sometimes installing indoor plumbing for the first time. How can the community become involved in the work you do? At Telemon Corporation, our roots are embedded in citizen participation, so we're always looking for volunteers to help out with our projects. And serving on one of our advisory groups, like our Drug Abuse Prevention Partnership, our state councils, or even our corporate governing board, is an excellent way for people to help us strengthen our ties to the communities we serve. Telemon has helped so many people over the years. How do you plan to continue your mission into the future? Well, our mission is to brighten the futures of people in need. And, and in this time of scarce resources, we think that our approach to finding new and better ways to do getting the job done brightens our future as well. If you look at our corporate logo, you see that it depicts a human figure of strength and support. But the real story is the heart that beats behind it with the commitment of a thousand staff and volunteers. And we think that's a formula for a long and healthy corporate life. Well, that's it for another Success Stories television special for Raleigh. Thanks for watching. Check your TV listings for our next program. Till next time, whatever you're doing in business, we hope you too can build a success story.